Hello friends and neighbors. It is a rarity on this channel that I give a negative book review. In fact, outside of the books versus movies review of Twilight, I don't think I have ever given a an outright negative review of a book. I haven't always given terribly favorable reviews of books, but I've never actually come right out and said that I think a book is bad. The reason for this is actually pretty simple to understand. I do favorite books reviews on this channel, I do ultimate recommendation reviews on this channel, I do reviews of things that I enjoy reading, and I don't very often seek out books that I don't think I'm going to enjoy. That streak ends today, because today I am going to review The Boy in the Striped Pajamas by John Boyne. This is a book that got a lot of hype a few years ago when it came out. It is a book about a young boy, nine and eventually ten years old, named Bruno, who is the son of a very favored Nazi official. This Nazi official eventually finds himself in charge of the prison camp Auschwitz. And so Bruno then relocates from his home in Berlin to basically the middle of nowhere outside the camp of Auschwitz. And this is the story of how he deals with that move and how he eventually meets and befriends one of the prisoners. This is a perfect example of a book that had a very, very promising idea that was executed extremely poorly. I am not usually one to make a fuss about historical inaccuracies. I understand that when you are writing a historical fiction novel, you have the right to take some liberties in order to make for a better story, and I completely understand taking those liberties. But there are a couple of different problems with that with this book. First of all, it's the Holocaust, and you have to be really, really careful when you're taking liberties with the Holocaust. And these aren't just minor details, either. There are things in this story that even if you're not super familiar with World War II history or Holocaust history, you know there is something kind of off about this, that there is something wrong with what you're reading. And what's probably worse about the historical inaccuracies is that had they bothered to actually do a little bit of token research into the period, and had they actually bothered to be a little bit more accurate with the historical aspects of the story, it would have made for a vastly better story. The whole story takes place from the point of view of Bruno, this nine-year-old German boy from the time period of World War II. Any nine or ten year old boy living in this time period, particularly the son of a favored Nazi official, is going to know who the Fuhrer is, is certainly going to know how to pronounce the Fuhrer's name and not call him the Fury even after he is corrected multiple times. And he's probably already been told about the so-called inferiority of the Jews, and so he is not going to be completely ignorant about where they are and who these prisoners are in this prison camp. But even putting all of those things aside, this nine-year-old boy reads more like a three-year-old boy. I mean, nine-year-olds have much, much more presence of mind than this. Anyone who's spent time with nine-year-olds knows that. The author was going for innocent with this character, but he ended up with stupid. This is a stupid, stupid little boy. And honestly, if he had been writing a younger character, if he had made the boy a three-year-old boy, a much, much younger character, or even made him into a character who had some sort of cognitive delay or some sort of disability that these parents were trying to hide from the uh, Nazi higher-ups, that would have made for a much more interesting story, but that's not what we have here. The characterization of everybody is off. The characters are either completely unlikable, or they are completely flat, or they are written so briefly that we don't have time to get to know them. In fact, there's a pretty consistent pattern as you're reading this book. Whenever a character starts to get a little bit interesting, it disappears from the story. And even Shmuel, the Jewish boy that Bruno befriends, he never has any sort of characterization outside of generic suffering boy. And it seems like the author is constantly 
hyper aware that he is writing a story for children because he is always skirting the tough issues. And I realize that that's kind of the point because he's writing this story from a very, very innocent point of view. And, th and that's tough to do, writing a Holocaust story for kids. But if you're going to do it, if you're going to choose to go there, then go all the way or don't go there at all. And I'm not going to speculate on whether kids can handle that sort of thing or anything like that, but go all the way or don't go there at all. There's also the matter of the ending, and I don't really want to talk about the ending explicitly because I know people will attack me for giving away spoilers and all that sort of thing, but basically that was kind of his last ditch effort to make this story have an impact. It comes out of nowhere, it doesn't work, and he even skirts that issue. He never even explicitly says that anything happens. He even skirts that. The whole writing style of this book is just insipid and annoying. I was annoyed all the way through the reading of this book. If you want to read a World War II historical story that is aimed for younger readers, then read The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak, which I've already talked about to death, or Number of the Stars by Lois Lowry, which is actually aimed for about the same age group that I think The Boy in the Striped Pajamas is aimed for. It's not a Holocaust story per se, but it is World War II, and it does make reference to that relationship, a friendship with uh, a Jewish person. And it is handled in a much more mature fashion. It actually allows the reality of the situation to have an impact while still maintaining the innocence that John Boyne was going for. I have to admit I feel kind of bad giving this rating to this story because I really do feel like this story has potential to be good, but it is executed so poorly, it doesn't work on any level, and I cannot, in good conscience, recommend it in any way. It gets a worthless on the worth meter. And that does it for this book review. I promise my next book review will be considerably more positive. Until next time, happy reading.